Do you know my mother would always say every week, oh my God, you guys would have laughed so hard. Every week she'd leave me her shopping list and I thank God I saved one on my messages. Mm -hmm. She's like, okay, so I want four table talk pies. They were these little tiny pies. No cherry, just blueberry, like yelling. (laughs) And four bananas, not too ripe. I got it, Ma. (laughs) Every week, not too ripe for 10 years. She said not too ripe. So oh this is for you, gosh. Ma. You did you fucking big mouth. Did you dye did you dye your hair blue to be closer to the blueberries she loved? <laughs> like notice me, mama. You have a very good comedy mind. Mm. I have to tell you, because that was very good. I, I like it when I can actually respect the people I'm on the podcast yeah. with. Because trust me, I phoned a few in. <laughs> Nikki Glazer. No, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. We love Nikki. Yeah. We I gotta know. get Nikki on this show. Oh, dude. We gotta start some feuds. Nikki, you're a bitch. Oh my I God. I dare you to come back at us. Oh my God. We're trying to get our numbers up. She wouldn't. She would so cry. because No, she, she wouldn't believe it. Of she course not. Joking. By the way, I always laughed. I just bumped into Rich Voss last week. He did this little club near where I live. And I was like, this Rich Voss, you know what he used to do? You know how he's, he's so mean yes. off stage. He would come up to me. And this is the beauty of Rich Voss. He would come up the next day and go, hey, last night. You know I was kidding, right? <laughs> so he'd always like make sure you were okay. Aww. And you know what that shows? That he's a little bitch and he's taking everything How personally, right? How dare you? No, he's you're like, right though. You're right. And I love he's that. Like, he's like, but that's, that is cute. He's well, because none of the, the other guys, I had such a hard time with all the guys coming up and they were always really mean and I hated it. And I was just like, why can't you keep your comedy to the stage? Why be mean <laughs> off stage? Like I'm such oh a fucking- God, Esther would die if people weren't mean off stage. She feeds her. I know. Oh, I, lo- I like, I love, I love being roasted, teased, <gasps> made fun of. That's it's like really my love language. Heart. Let's put it this way. I <laughs> admire that quality. I will say that. I have said publicly after retirement, I literally could not take a joke. I had the thinnest really? skin, not on the roast, those were fine, but off stage. And I was like, Lisa, you were an insult comic who couldn't take a joke. That's like being a pedophile who can't stand children's parties. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on. It's you like can't being take a, a child's death. Yeah. It's like, come on. It's, it's like, nowhere it's like, for you it's in like society. It's like being a porn star like who's a, allergic to semen. A pedophile that doesn't like small dicks. Yeah. You know? it's I like, mean, so I I just go, it's, it's interesting though. I really always had a thin skin when we were just sitting around at the table. So I would just bring a book and read. Well, I'm curious. That is such a move. To bring a book and read. But I have problems oh, with it. When you go on the road. Enough. Oh, what book do you have? I'll, I'll just start reading. Okay. Oh, my God. I'll Esther. read my book. What is podcast. it? Let me hypnotize you. You don't War need this book. Oh, I it's have so that. Good. I sold it. You said, <laughs> I bought it. I'm just kidding. Wait, <laughs> she bought my second hand copy. Because I quit comedy. She sold all her comedy books. Uh, <laughs> I have a question. When you did the roasts, because I have heard from other people who've done the roasts that like, just I've not people that I know personally, but mm-hmm. I've heard like through the grapevine, like some people have been like left really affected and in, in a bad way. And I'm just curious if you ever had that experience, if it ever right. bothered you or was whatever. Well, this is how I'm smart. I wanted to always appear like on camera as much as possible. Cause you know, I started comedy late. I was 30. Is that why you were fat? <laughs> we wanted to be the most on camera. <laughs> yeah, I know, really. <laughs> Eat your way to the top. So I'm sitting there. And I always knew, because there's a teleprompter, right. and you always saw your name being used, but you didn't read the joke. So I'm like, okay, get ready to look like it's funny, even if it sucks. Mm. So I would always sit up, you know, you sit at the edge of the chair, and you just like, oh my God. So I would always get these emails like, oh my God, you take it as good as you give it. So I always knew how to that look was like on the Pornhub. best sport in the world. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and somebody asked me, you know, do any jokes hurt your feelings? And legitimately, honestly, it's roast, so probably not. The few times it hurt was when it was lazy. So oh. if a joke is like just a random fucking whore fat, whatever, yeah. insert yeah. woman insult type here, yeah. I'd be like, geez, I'm not even worth that. Like it really would be just like, yeah, it's come like on, rude. man, try. Yeah. Be creative for me. Cause and But if, if somebody writes a good joke about me, I am so fucking happy. Like, Artie Lang had the best joke about me. I put it in my book. I was like, I don't even care. I love this so much. We were doing Shatner, I think Shatner's roast. And Artie was at his most fattest, poor thing with the gray skin. And he goes up and he goes, if I had a nickel for every time somebody said, hey, aren't you Lisa Lampadelli? (laughs) I loved it. So I said to myself, well, maybe I don't have thin skin. I just like people to make an effort. Yeah. yeah. So it just felt insulting if you just throw a fat joke or an old joke or an ugly joke 100%. your way. Yeah. It's totally dumb. Agree. I didn't do that. Yeah. I literally would take two months to write a good roast because I, I had to usually go last because they were all bitches and yeah. wouldn't follow me. It's better to go last. No, it's the worst because no, you have to No, but I still overwrite. think it is because you can you No, can the kill. best spot 
first, first. because you get it all out of the but way. But your anger won't be there. At oh, the my end. anger was always there before <laughs> I quit comedy. I literally used to be because my mother was a rageaholic, and bless her heart, my dad we too. resolved that. Yeah, I always went to anger. And what's interesting is ever since I retired, I've noticed the anger going away slowly yeah. and coming out of sadness, which is what it actually is. Oh, so anytime beautiful. I see somebody yell, I mean, I still yell, but not that percentage. But dude, like whenever I hear a story about somebody yelling in a drive through or whatever, I go, what pain they must be in. Because I know it was all pain. Oh, yeah. No, you. that's the best. I feel like that's such a good way, especially with like trolls and stuff. When I was decluttering.